Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, today we're going to talk about the 555 timer, one of my favorite uh, components, especially when I was in school. I used it for every single project I, I had while I was in school, uh, more or less. There were obviously some exceptions. Uh, this, is, this will be the third uh, of many block electronic tutorial videos relating to my electronic learning board that will be actually, I'll have demonstrations for it next week. What these videos are going to do is they're going to serve to show you the theory behind each block on the board so that you can understand the theory and easily make your plugins on the board to make a project really fast and understand it. Anyhow, the 555 timer has eight pins on it. Uh, what we'll be working with is uh, a dip IC, a dual inline package so it can fit into a breadboard or a dip socket. Um, you might see uh, versions called NE555. There's actually a bunch of different versions manufactured by different companies. Uh, if you were to look at the data sheet, you could look up 555 timer data sheet or NE555 data sheet. We're, uh, this, this first video, we're going to talk about monostable mode. Our next video, we'll be talking about A-stable mode. Now, in monostable mode, we'll get to exactly what that means in a second. Uh, but really, what we want to do when you get right down to the nitty-gritty is to create longer pulses. We're going to feed it a small pulse, we're going to create a bigger pulse. Now that'll be more apparent in a minute, but pins 1 is in the lower left. This little notch is on every single 555 timer and um, all dip ICs, it's a notation uh, device to tell you that right below that is pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5, pin 6, pin 7, pin 8. And I've labeled them right here. VCC, our power supply pin, is pin 1. And our project later when we do a lab is going to be 5 volts. Uh, so that's right here. Discharge th and thresh work together to determine the uh, the length of the pulse. And of course, we have to actually add in some uh, passive components, a resistor and a capacitor. We'll get to that in a minute. Control. I would. I'm not going to use this pin for this application. I would use it for high frequencies when enabled a stable mode because the 555 timer can also be used to create uh, pulses, like uh, on its own. It's like an oscillator. It is not square wave oscillator. Square wave oscillator. Reset, pin 4, we are going to use that, and we're going to do something really neat with it. We're going to create what's called a power on reset circuit, so that when you power on the circuit, the device doesn't automatically trigger. 3 is our output. We're going to be feeding, a, the, uh, feeding this signal to a, an LED, so we know when the pulse is actually being triggered. 2, trigger, we're going to use this pin, pin 2, to trigger, our, trigger the pulse, and ground, of course, uh, is our ground line. We need to apply power here and our DC ground here on pin 1. Now enough of this, I'm going to show you the circuit and then we're going to go over how it works. Once I put this on a breadboard in just a few minutes, we'll be actually using 5 volts for our power supply. But what here I've got here is a, a battery. This is a schematic symbol for a battery. The longer lead here is positive, shorter is negative. Uh, this is your ground reference point here and here. Anywhere you see that in a schematic, imagine a wire going from here to here. They're all interconnected, just like this is a reference, VCC. I use VCC as a power reference point. So here is connected to here, and anywhere else we see that as our schematic progresses. So next what we have to do is we have to create a power on reset circuit. So the device, uh, so the device uh, powers up properly and doesn't false trigger when you power it up. And it's actually really easy. Let me just pause it and we'll, we'll, uh, I'll write it down on the board. This is what's called the power on reset circuit. Pin 4 is our reset line. When you apply power, I don't want there to be a false trigger on the, uh, on the output because it can happen, especially if you just have pin 4 tied to the VCC line. Uh, a lot of applications will have that, especially in a stable mode, but I want to make sure you power up the device the output is going to be low until you trigger it. So this is the circuit. It's a t uh, in this case, it's a 10 k ohm resistor, a 10 microfarad electrolytic cap. That's the positive. The top side is positive. The curved side is negative. Negative side is connected to ground. Positive connected to the resistors, connected to VCC. And right in the middle, we've got connected to pin 4. Now, what, what's this, you might ask? I want you to imagine the capacitor as a little cup. Uh, and it... Uh, if you pour it really, pour in water really, really fast, it's going to fill up like that. But if you limit the current, imagine current is water. If you limit current through a, a larger resistor to the capacitor, what's going to happen is this is like an hourglass. The voltage is going to fill up slowly. 
and once it gets up to VCC, once it gets up to 5 volts, once it fills up, the system becomes active. Because it's powered, as soon as you power it on, the system has power, but the output will remain, uh, the, the system will essentially remain off relative to functionality until this part, this line goes high. So we're basically powering it on, and this, this will be powered on really fast, this line will be powered on much slower. So, um, this is actually a, a fast power and reset circuit. It's a couple, it'll add a couple milliseconds, so that's all we need. So, uh, basically, just think of this as an hourglass. Now what we need to do is we need to connect pins, uh, pins 6 and 7 together, and we need to add our delay components, a resistor and a capacitor. And I'm going to give you the formula for that in just a second after I show you the connections. Okay, so pins 6 and 7 are connected together. We've got our VCC connected to a series resistor with the 5 and 6 lines that are tied together, and we've got a capacitor, positive side connected in between, negative side to ground. And we're just going to consider those R and C. We're going to get to some calculations in a second, don't worry, it's basic arithmetic. And you'll actually see this baby in action in just, just a few minutes, I promise. We're almost done. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to put a series resistor, a current limiting resistor, and an LED iter output. And that's going to be our visual indicator that the output is being triggered. So the current limiting resistor limits current to the LED. If you just connect an LED to the output, it'll fry as soon as it goes high because the 555 timer can actually source uh, quite a bit of current at its output. If it doesn't fry right away, it'll fry pretty quickly. So I'm going to add a current limiting resistor and a die, uh, an LED. Then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our trigger circuitry. Just quickly, we'll talk about this. 390 ohm resistor limiting current to the LED. Uh, this can actually be 390 ohms to 1000 ohms, 1k ohms. Uh, and again, just to save the LED. You do this, good practice, the LED will last forever. Well, not forever, but probably longer than you or I. LEDs last long, a, a long, long, long time. So now that leaves our trigger. We're going to do two kinds of trigger. We're going to do a software trigger option, meaning we can, we, or I shouldn't say software trigger. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. We're going to do a hardware trigger where you just press a button and it triggers it. But we're also going to give it a software option so that we can send you use software from another peripheral to send 5 volts to this device in addition to the button to trigger it another way. And when you actually see the learning board, this will become apparent because this is very important. We're going to have the button there for test and we're going to have the what I call the software option so that we can use an, uh, uh, an amplifier circuit to trigger this. This may look complicated, but it's really not. Ignore all of this for a minute and just look at the resistor going to pin 2. This is a 10K, 10,000 ohm resistor, uh, limiting current to pin 2. And now, on its own, pin 2 does not need current limiting. We'll get to that in a second. Um, the input resistance, input impedance of that line is so high that regardless of that resistor, we still see VCC right here. Not just right here, we'll see the same voltage right here with maybe a couple millivolts drop. Anyhow, that aside, uh, if we just had our just a straight VCC to that line, what we want to do to trigger is we want to do our hardware trigger right here, just using a button, push button, you push that, it shorts that line to ground. So if you have VCC connected there and you short that to ground, you're essentially doing this, which is a short circuit, which will destroy your battery, and of course your circuit will not work. So that's limiting current. So only a little bit of current will be drained when you press that button. So this is our trigger, our hardware trigger. We press that button, and the output will go high for however long we determine based on that RC network, resistor capa resistive capacitive network. Alternately, this is an NPN transistor. There are three pins on an NPN transistor, and there are many uses for, an, uh, for transistors. This is just one. We're using this as a switch. Now what this is going to do, it's going to act like a button. This is the collector the base and the emitter. When a voltage is applied to the base, current at the collector flow through the transistor through to the emitter, which is connected to ground. So basically, this is acts as an electronic button. Once we apply a pulse through this protective 10k ohm resistor, what's going to happen is it will short the 5 volts that we see right here, protected by this uh, current limiting resistor, and it's going to be VCC just by, protected to by just a little bit of current. It'll flow through that and it'll trigger our circuit. So basically, we can use another device, such as an amplifier comparator circuit, to trigger our, trigger our, our 555 timer. 
So I'm going to do one more bit of this video, then we're going to do a quick lab. But trust me, uh, this is all necessary. This is a, a neat circuit, and you can really do a lot with it. And if you check out my electronics learning board, you'll see this, because this is a very, very, very important circuit on my learning board. Anyhow, let's make a table. Okay, so our the delay at the output when triggered is uh, is determined by a formula 1.1 RC. 1.1 uh, RC means 1.1 times the resistor value, times the capacitor value. So in my table, I have my resistor value. K means 1,000, so 10, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, for my capacitor, I've chosen 10 micro. Now, in case you don't know what 10 micro is, uh, this is the equivalent of 10 micro. Uh, 0 0.1 is 100 uh, milli. Uh, 0 0.01 farads is 10 milli. 0 0.001 is 1 milli. 0 0.000 uh, 1 is 100 micro and 0 0.00001 is 10 micro. I had again, I have the other video explaining all of that, the notations below, so if you're confused, watch it. So basically, multiply 1.1 times 10,000 times 0 0.00001, and that'll be our output. And it'll be a very, very short duration because of the, the components we've used. So pause it right now and try to figure that out. Hopefully you got the same number as I did, 0 0.11, and that's in seconds. So you, you, trigger the, you trigger it, and based on these two components, our output will go high for 0 0.11 seconds. So roughly a tenth of a second. So let's try another. What if we change our capacitor value to 100 micro, but leave our uh, resistor value to 10K? Multiply 0. Point, this is the equivalent of 10 micro, 0 0.0001. One. Multiply that by 10,000 times 1.1, .1, and what do you get? Hopefully you got 1.1 seconds as well. That's how long our output will be. So what if we change our R value to 100K, 100,000, and leave our capacitor at 100 micro, which of course is 0 0.0001, and we multiply this times this times 10, sorry, 0 0.001 times 10,000 times 1.1. What do we get? We get 11 seconds. So you can keep measure, making this table. Again, it's very easy. It's, it's three multipliers. Your resistor, your capacitor, times 1.1. So what we would do is we just need to plug those values into our RC network at pins 6 and 7, and we're off. So let's go and put this on a breadboard. I know this might be pretty difficult to see, but let me explain this. We've got a 555 timer in here, our current limiting resistor to our LED. Our power on reset circuit is right in here on the reset pin. It's very clumped in there. I know this isn't the best breadboard representation, but this is exactly what you'll be seeing on the learning kit. Uh, for RC, our RC components at pins 5 and 6, or sorry, 6 and 7, we've got a 10K ohm resistor and a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. The calculation we just did suggested that if we pulse the, if we, if we activate the output, we trigger the output, the LED should go on for roughly 1.1 seconds. Now there will be a small tolerance because capacitors typically have a tolerance of plus minus 10 percent whereas these resistors have a tolerance of about plus minus 5 percent. So here's my button. This is the exact same circuit you just saw on the board. I'm going to press the button. One Mississippi. One Mississippi. There you go. Roughly 1.1 seconds. Now here's my transistor. I've got it buried right behind, underneath the switch. Might be Again, it's very difficult to see. But I've got the collector connected to the pin 2, you know, where the pull-up's connected. I've got my base of the transistor connected to a 10K ohm resistor to a wire here. We're going to use this to pulse. And we've got our emitter connected to ground, which is also connected to the secondary side of the button through this black wire. So press the button. LED gets triggered. If I use this this uh, if I use this wire going th to activate the transistor, I can just connect it to the power line. It does the same thing. So I can use another chip's output to activate this. Now, why would I use this? I would use this for many reasons. A lot of circuits create many pulses. What if I wanted to turn that into one pulse? Anyhow, let me just try one more uh, one more quick representation. I'll do uh, a different RC value. I'll do 100K and I'll do 100 micro as we did on the board and that should give it that should give us about 11 seconds duration let's try it power the circuit on press the button count with me 
One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven Mississippi. So off by a little bit because of the tolerance of the component as well. I'm not counting in perfect seconds. Regardless, you get the idea. We're going to use this for a ton of different projects. This is one of the most important blocks in the electronics learning board. I hope you found this video educational. I hope you try it on your own if you have a 555 timer. All of these components are are very easy to find. Any Radio Shack, uh, the source will have them. Passive components can be found all over the place on eBay, but if you do have a chance, check out our, our electronics learning board, which will be up for uh, review next week. Uh, it won't be up for sale for about two weeks, but I hope you'll check out our demonstration videos. Thanks, guys.